What is going on guys, Bisectatron here, bringing you guys today's video. We are talking about two of my favorite duo combinations in Clash of Clans. These are two different pairs that work really well together and they apply to pretty much every Town Hall level. Town Hall 10, 11, 12. First one's a little more Town Hall 11, 12 oriented. The second one's gonna be a little more Town Hall 10 oriented, but there is some overlap. Um, Starting it right off with a drag bat attack because my first one I want to highlight in this video is the ice golem bat spell combination. These two work really well together because the ice golem is able to tank and freeze certain defenses which are very hard on the bat spell. And uh, you'll see what I mean here. This wasn't the best example of this attack, but you can see the ice golem goes down right there. It tanks that wizard tower. Now it was a little bit early because the bats are still over on this side of the base and they come over here the slammer actually starts taking the wizard tower but the multi isn't down so it kills all the bats but the idea is is there you want to use an ice golem to tank typically a wizard tower um to help your bats not die so when you're looking at a base you're either going to use dragons or like a pekka bowler uh, attack on the front end then you use bat spells on the back end and you want to look for a base where there's not a whole lot of splash damage. Uh, that's air targeting splash damage specifically. So wizard towers, multi infernos. Look for a base where there's not a whole lot on the back end. But still, you're going to have to figure out, okay, how am I going to keep this uh, inferno frozen? You can either drop the bats directly on top of it or use a bat wave coming in from the side of the base. But typically, you're going to have to use free spells at certain points. The, the benefit of using an ice golem is that it frees up spell space. Um, but also it tanks a lot longer because as long as it's still alive and the wizard tower is targeting it it's tanking and the bats cannot be hurt by that wizard tower and also uh it it freezes when it dies so it has that combined effect of tanking and then getting that freeze um, and sometimes if a wizard tower is hidden in the base pretty far and there's a lot of defenses around it you might have to freeze that wizard tower twice just to make sure it doesn't kill your bats in like one shot um, so here we go. This is a much better example of this attack. Um, if you look at the back end of the base, it's a little bit tricky. There's a wizard tower and then there's the multi-inferno and they're not like really that close to each other. So you can't just drop a rage, a freeze and all your bats because your freeze can't cover both the multi-inferno and the wizard tower. Um, if, that, if it wasn't the case, it would be really easy to take out this base because then you just do rage, freeze, bats right on top of that multi. Um, but here we go, look at this, we got the uh, Ice Golem coming in, it's going to tank that Wizard Tower, and then does the Rage Freeze Bats on the Multi Inferno, gets it taken out, meanwhile the Wizard Tower is locked on to that Ice Golem, and one thing you should note, because we do have that Freeze Effect as I talked about, which will keep that Wizard Tower down for the Bats, but one thing you should know is that um, after the Wizard Tower and whatever other defenses are targeting the Ice Golem, kill that Ice Golem, the freeze effect is delayed a little bit, so the wizard tower has time to turn around and typically take like one shot. So typically that won't be fatal, but you just gotta keep that in mind that it is possible you could lose a few bats if they're right next to that wizard tower and um, the ice golem dies and the freeze kind of creeps up to the wizard tower. There's a little bit of a delay, so just keep that in mind. Um, but typically you're gonna be okay. And that's how you wanna do it, just as we saw in this example. Uh, you drop that ice golem on the outside of the base, it'll target either a wall or a defense, but as long as it's in range of that wizard tower, you're good to go. And you can even freeze a uh, multi-inferno if you're able to get the ice golem right up to the wall and the inferno is only four tiles from the wall, you can actually freeze the inferno as well. Um, so sometimes you could even uh, avoid having to use a freeze at all and just go heavy bats as soon as that ice golem dies. A little more advanced. Um, but I think the main key here is using that ice golem to tank wizard towers and even archer towers Teslas They still do take out bats as well and uh, you'll get that freeze effect when it dies a lot of value um, Definitely helps out the bats on the back end Okay, um, moving right along here this next one. We're gonna go down to number 25 This is the next combination that I'm a huge fan of it's basically the Town Hall 10 or even Town Hall 11, I'd say. Town Hall 12, maybe not quite as much. Um, it's the spam with the back end slammer. And the spam can be in various uh, forms. In this case, it's a Falcon. We'll take a look at a different one next. But the idea is oftentimes what will happen is if you do an attack like a Bow Witch or a Falcon, you're going to take out like 75% of the base really quickly. 
But what, what really makes or breaks the attack is that last uh, like 25% of the base. Is it easy to get taken out? Is there still an Inferno Tower left up? Uh, how many troops are alive? And those are kind of what determine whether or not you'll 3-star. Having a back-end slammer will take out those additional defenses that are kind of up, that ring of defenses around the base. And typically, uh, a lot of bases like this have the air defenses somewhat close to the core. Um, this is as far as they need to be. They don't have to be like in the core, but as long as they're like where you see them in this base, that's actually pretty ideal. Because um, you come in with the Falcon in this case, take out the entire core of the base, and then from there, the Slammer can clear out a ton of defenses. Drop it early though. Um, this is almost back to the Town Hall 8 days when you would do like uh, back end balloons. Drop them early. Uh, in this case, it, t it hits two Seeking Air Mines, which is extremely unlucky. I recommend, actually three Seeking Air Mines, that is extremely unlucky. Uh, I recommend using a, a test balloon, drop it in first, it's worth the five troop space to soak up whatever air traps, because you have nothing else that's soaking that up besides the healers maybe. Um, but in this case, another good adjustment, you have that extra spell at Town Hall 10, because you're bringing a poison, but you have one more spell space, and typically there's not a lot of use for it. Use it, uh, drop, bring a haste because the haste spell you drop the haste on the balloons when the slammer dies, and the balloons will get a ton more value if they're hasted through wherever they drop down. Um, so, in this case, like I, like I said, there was a bunch of defenses left up right around this area. Slammer comes through, clears that all out, makes the attack work. And we'll take a look at another uh, two examples because this is one of my favorite things at Town Hall. 10. Um, and it works at Town Hall 11 too. The reason it's more of a Town Hall 10 thing though, if you have to choose, is because, let me go on number 40 here, um, because the Slammer is that much more powerful at Town Hall 10, you still have a level 3 max stone Slammer and the max balloons inside of it. Having that on the back end of the base against Town Hall 10 defenses is extremely powerful. Um, as you go up in Town Hall levels, the Siege Machines don't become uh, quite as powerful. I mean, if you look at the Wall Wrecker, for example, it has a, a trouble getting through like even just two layers of a base at Town Hall 12 because the walls, if they're maxed out, take three shots. You have a lot of heavy uh, point defense on them. Much easier to go deeper at Town Hall 10 with the Wall Wrecker. Um, that being said, we have a P.E.K.K.A. funnel, actually several P.E.K.K.A.s, three P.E.K.K.A.s in this uh, kind of Bow Witch attack here. Has the healers on the witches, that's a good uh, combo right there. And then everything coming in, a nice early heal spell, which I like. Um, actually, this is a dip attack. I had no idea this was a dip attack. That's a little embarrassing. Um, okay, well, it used a back end slammer. Uh, <laughs> so I, it could have worked as a Town Hall 10, I think. Luckily, I have one more attack, so I don't have to end on this kind of awkward moment. Um, but the other one is also another Falcon. It is number 31. Apologies for that uh, that dip attack I started showing. Um, it somehow, I, I mean, it looked like it was an awesome attack, but I guess the reason was they had a Grand Warden, and I saw the Warden's ability, and I knew, that, okay, that's that's not a Town Hall 10 feature. Anyway, um, this one is a Town Hall 10, and I guess the Falcon might be the best candidate for a back-end slammer, but I like it also with the Bow Witch, if you're going to jump through the base just once or twice. Um, instead of using the wall record, the jumps are more reliable for sure, and if there's value on the back end, it's a better investment to just bring the jumps than bring that back end slammer, um, because getting the back end of the base is, is what it's all about, as I said. Okay, so coming in here, lots of funnel troops. We got uh, Baby Dragon, Valks, Bowlers, all contributing to that funnel um, to make sure everything goes in. Most important thing of the Falcon is the funnel. Um, and most of the troops do in fact go into the base here. Healer's getting some great value. Then look at the slammer. I like the uh, where it's put, but you can see there's no air coverage, actually no air defenses specifically, on the top part of that base. Once again, would have liked to see a test balloon for a uh, seeking air mine. We'll see if it hits one or not. But it looks, it gets that multi-inferno, which otherwise was not taken out, and it's gonna get all of these defenses at the top. It's gonna have a field day up at 12 o'clock there. And these are defenses that would otherwise be kind of surrounding the troops here. This allows the uh, the healers to not get picked off too easily, and there's also balloons inside. Once again, we got the haste spell, which will uh, allow those balloons to speed up when they pop out. But I don't even think the slammer is going to go down on this attack here. Uh, so great stuff. Um, actually, right here, I might, it might go down. Yep. Yeah, there the balloons just come out. By the way, if um, 
if if you have to decide between let's say there's not much time left in the attack this is kind of random but I want to mention it because I just remembered if there's not much time left in the attack and you have to decide um, you have your slammer left up and it's on cleanup which is going to be quicker do I drop the balloons out of it or do I keep the slammer up uh, it's going to be better to keep the slammer up the damage I believe is a little bit less obviously than like eight max balloons but I think the fact that it moves quicker is what really makes the difference because the slammer does enough damage to one shot most buildings at Town Hall uh, 10 for cleanup purposes the main difference is that it moves faster so unless you have a haste spell you can use to speed up your balloons you're gonna be better off just keeping the slammer and hoping it can clean up fast enough uh, unless you're you know on a storage or something the balloons can probably take it out with one collective drop um, but besides that, keep the balloons in the slammer if you're on a time crunch, you got to clean up because uh, that's going to get done a little bit quicker just based on movement speed. Alright, so that was a little bit of an aside, but thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry about that one attack that turned out to be a dip. Um, but in summary, guys, two uh, different duo combinations I like at Town Hall t uh, 10, Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12. Um, first one being the, the uh, bat spell and the ice golem, town hall 11 and 12 pretty much. Second one being a spam, a falcon might be the best of the spam attacks, uh, but a ground spam typically can be bow witch as well with a back end stone slammer with balloons and usually a haste spell, especially at town hall 10 with that extra spell space, but can work at town hall 11 as well. That will do it though, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.